I was almost passed out, literally. I was totally unprepared. So it was the summer of 2012 and Black Girls Code started about six months before as a hyper-local organization in the Bay Area. And we were reaching consistently about 20 to 30 students in our classrooms. And we had an idea, uh, this, this, this novel idea that like, we can reach 200 students if we take BGC on the road. We selected Atlanta, Georgia as our very first city of six. And I traveled to Emory University by myself, literally, expecting you know, a class of 20, 30 students and was running a little late that morning to get to class and was met by a long wraparound line of girls and parents waiting for us to come into the building. I don't often get startled like deer in the headlights, but at that time I did because I felt alone and I, I felt like I, I had too much on my hands and my plate and I, I, I had a moment where I almost locked up a bit. I was very surprised to find so many students and families even that were there and they had an interest in what we were doing. And it was really those the efforts of those very first volunteers in Atlanta, even parents who were just there initially to drop a child off, who jumped in and helped me like do the registration and get kids in the line and to organize the launch that gave me a peace of mind. That sense of community has been something that has resonated with our organization from that very first day. That was a turning point for BGC as an organization because not only did we have an overwhelming response in Atlanta, Georgia, when we went to Detroit, Michigan, I made a mistake, quote unquote, of going on the morning news show that morning and talking about the workshop that we were gonna do that day at Wayne State. And not only did we have another wraparound line of students that were already registered, people who were watching this morning show that morning actually called in and showed up. So we probably had another 50, 75 families coming to get into that workshop as well. And in each and every city that we traveled to that summer, we had the same response. And that was when we realized that we could take Black Girls Code from this hyper-local community-based, you know, really small organization to a movement across the U.S., if not beyond. And we created a chapter-based structure that would utilize this core of technical and non-technical volunteers in various cities to help us elevate the movement. Because at that time, we were only two people strong. That volunteer core of, of supporters that pitched in in that very first workshop in Atlanta became the model for what we call now you know, the Girl Scouts of Technology. After that first Atlanta workshop, we started to see some really rapid growth. We've reached almost 10,000 students to date all across the U.S. We have 14 chapters here in the U.S. and we have one chapter internationally in Johannesburg, South Africa. We had to address how do we maintain fidelity in our model as we kind of handed it off to others that may not necessarily be working with us on a day-to-day -day basis. So it took a leap of faith, I think, on our effort to hand our baby and our vision over to others that had a similar interest in making sure that the industry would become more diverse. As a founder and as a founding team, you don't have to do it all. You can do more and go further by enlisting others in your singular vision. And others will be there. You know, There's not going to be everyone that agrees with what you're doing and everyone's not going to be on your team but it's important to find your tribe and utilize this tribe of individuals that believe in what you're doing to help you grow and help you move your vision forward.